Hi, this is Sandy Rios of Sandy Rios 24-7, and sitting next to me is the, well, new to me, president of the National Religious Broadcasters. He's the president and CEO of NRB, Troy Miller, larger than life, sitting next to me. <laughs> Hi, Troy. Hey, Sandy. Thanks for having me. Okay, now wait. I have to ask you first about your Navy. You were in the Navy. Yes, I was. I served six years in the Navy. I was a gunner's mate missiles. I uh, commissioned the USS Bunker Hill, and I spent seven months in 1987 in the Persian Gulf escorting tankers in and out. You know, um, that's not irrelevant. I mean, I, I know that's not the main point of our conversation here, but how, how do you think that prepared you for what God called you to do later? Well, you know, it's interesting in a number of ways it prepared me. First of all, I had a grandmother who watched Christian television all the time, and she had this grandson in the Navy, and she knew he had a captive audience. So she sent me my first Bible. No she kidding. sent me D. James Kennedy's book, Why I Believe, and that was instrumental in bringing me to Christ. I and, had no idea. Yep. See, right, I'm well, glad I asked that question. Hmm. Isn't that something? And there, you were there any? Were you? I don't know what years you served. So was there? Was it a peacetime? Was it peacetime? Well, like I said, it was 1987. The Iranians had lined the Persian oh, Gulf with yes. silkworm missiles. They threatened to shut down the oil traffic, and uh, the Navy put a task force together to start escorting tankers. And we did those first. I think 38 or 40 escorts over seven months in and out of the Gulf. Wow. Yeah, I'd say that was tense times. Yeah. Well, Troy, uh, that's nice to know about you. I, I always respect someone who served, and so thank you for that. Thank you. All right, so then you became a businessman uh, through a number of gateway uh, computers and all of that. So we, we don't have time to – I remember gateway. I had a gateway. We ordered it. You kind of custom made – you know, ordered your yep, own, right? That's right. It was a great business. Yeah, everybody remembers the cow-spotted boxes. <laughs> that's that's the true. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yes, I got a cow-spotted box a couple of times. Uh, but – uh, National Religious Broadcasters is like home turf for you and certainly familiar to me, but my audience, you know, I talk a lot about politics and news. Oh, yeah. So they may not really understand. This is the NRB, International Religious Broadcasters Association. Uh, what, who's here and what's the point? Well, who's here is everybody who's in Christian broadcasting, Christian communications, which is a huge field today. You know, uh, when NRB started 79 years ago, it was just radio. And now we have radio and television and podcasters and bloggers and filmmakers and people are in print publishing and digital publishing. And they're all here for a number of reasons. One, this is a great place to sharpen your skills. And it's also a great place to learn folks that are in the same, share ideas. The iron sharpens iron, I like yeah, to say all yeah. the time, is going on here. I believe um, that, too. And then also people that are concerned, especially in Christian communications, about the direction of where our country is going and the things that have happened to Christian communicators. You know, a lot of our people have been taken down from YouTube. They've had their Facebook pages taken down. They've had their Twitter accounts closed. Yes, uh, I know they've about had, that. They've had, yeah, you would know all about, about that. You know, you can't talk about certain things today on social media. You're going to be in trouble. If you're pro-family, pro-life, if you believe in just two genders and, uh, and you believe the Bible is important, your content is under attack. Yeah, are censored, and people yep. so people don't hear the truth. So that reminds me, your opening night, you had Franklin Graham, you had Ron DeSantis, who's now announced for as a presidential candidate. Uh, and uh, Franklin, I think, spoke about, and Abraham Hamilton III, who's a good friend and was my guest recently, because <laughs> now he's my guest as, rather than my just my friend. <laughs> uh, but uh, Troy, uh, Franklin Graham talked about creating a whole new platform that was untouchable. Uh, are you guys... Like, is that, mm, I know Franklin's doing that, but your thoughts about that? And oh, yeah, absolutely. And we've actually been working with Franklin's team on that and, and keeping constant touch with where they're at, how they're doing and creating their new data centers, maybe some new donor uh, platforms. We've also been in touch with a number of organizations uh, that are on that same thing. So as, as you know, Amazon's one of the big ones, AWS it's called, it's Amazon Web Services, um, they've been They've been shutting down access for them for a lot of Christians that use that for video distribution. And so so there's a number of companies out there that we're doing that. Um, we're also helping people find alternatives for insurance and banking and telemarketing. It's amazing today that our battle has shifted just from the government to a lot of corporate entities. And that's where we're and NRB is on the forefront of helping people in that area. You know, I just have to say a word, um, Troy, this, I've known... <laughs> I've been through several iterations of NRB presidents, and uh, and they've all been great. But I would say that under your leadership, they've get, there's been some growth, 
and some of your, your resources, and there's growth in the whole organization itself, and so you've done a great job as president. Well, thank you. God's good. Yeah. You know, you, you talked about my gateway days. I always thought I wanted to be a pastor. <laughs> you know, I never knew that God could use all your business or it's a background and yes. say, hey, someday that's right. going to be used for the kingdom of God. So, so I just remind people, we might have plans, but it's God who orders our footsteps, right? Okay. I love that reminder, and certainly it's true. That reminds me. I should write a book. I did. You should write a book. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I wanted to, you know, NRB at times uh, has been very political, and I'm just, I'm not going to weigh in on that, except to say I'm, <laughs> that's what I talk about. It's kind of where I, I sit as a Christian. So, but organizations have to kind of navigate a fine line with this, and some big denominations and Christian groups uh, recoil from any kind of notion of having a thought about what they call political, but really it's actually moral from my perspective. Where does NRB stand on that right now, and what's the line that you don't cross? Well, we're a 501c3, so we don't endorse candidates. That's the line we can't cross. But other than that, uh, we stand strong on the issues today, you know, and we support our members. Um, NRB is a, all about making sure that we work hard to make sure that the distribution pass, what we call the avenues for communication, are kept open to the public squares for all of our members. So our members are out there working on the issues of pro-life. They're working on the issues of the whole gender confusion and LGBTQ issues. They're working on the pro-family issues that are out there. And they're working on the issues that really have made this country great. And we support them and all that. And, and I just try to remind people, we're not political. Um, politics has moved into the church, That's not right. the church into politics. Most of our people want to just continue to do what they're doing. They want to do what God's called them to do. And the government has been the one that stepped in and said, oh, you can't, you can't open your church, you can't do that, you can't talk about this. A lot of people don't remember, it was almost eight, maybe 10 years ago, the mayor of Houston tried to tell pastors what sermons they could do. Thank goodness he woke up and figured out that's not going to work. But but our policy team, we now have Michael Ferris as our general counsel. Good we're, friend, we're working, former homeschool we're, legal defense. That's yeah. right. We're working hard um, to really combat that. We just recently entered a lawsuit against the state of California. Talk uh, about that. Yeah. Because that's interesting. It, it is interesting. So along with Babylon B, uh, Minds Inc., and Tim Poole, we're in this lawsuit. And, and they were looking, and NRB, we got together and said, hey, this is really going to affect our members because they're the going to be the ones that have to implement this lawsuit people so what, what the lawsuit says is is for any social media kind of company so that's any company that has a where you can create a personal page and then you can interact with other people on there and uh, crosswalk.com some other things that, that that salem network has and some other our members have that you have to report all the controversial issues to the state of california you have to report all these issues and doesn't really tell what they're going to do with that, but this is clearly California stepping in to be the free speech police. And, and we said, no, this is a, this is a violation of our members' uh, uh, rights here. They're free exercise rights. They're free speech rights. So Mike Ferris is spearheading that. We're taking the state of California to court and saying, no, th this is really wrong. And here, here's the issue. We know they said, well, it's certain size of companies, over $100, 000, uh, $100 million in, in revenue. We know that the, the government never stops there. You know, to, to, no. it's that there, then it's going to move down. Next right. thing you know, it's going to be the, the, yeah. the little mom and pops that are saying, oh, you can't talk about that issue. It's controversial. Well, totally. They, they don't ever stand still. They're That's always right. moving, taking more turf. And when you think it's like whack-a-mole, you think you've uh, adjusted one thing, here it comes again. So, <laughs> you know, I, I was just thinking, Troy, um, the power that NRB could have and does have. But if there were unity on an issue facing the church and all of the media outlets would join together to fight, to rise up and say no more, think of what effect that would have. Of course, I, and let me give a caveat to that. Sure. I really don't think that we as Christians should think in terms of our power. I, I know that's kind of controversial. I moral majority, I think, erred in that. Uh, they were right about what they did, but uh, it's not about us gaining power. To uh, It really isn't, but it's about the power of God bringing, you know, salt and light <laughs> to the government. Yeah. So that's, uh, anyway, uh, just think about that. Yeah, uh, it, no, Sandy, you're exactly right. You know, we, we often get demonized as these groups that are just out about power. 
You know, in all of my work here that I've been doing in NRB, especially over the last four years when I've been directly involved in NRB, I've really never run across anybody that they're talking about, that I hear them talking about, that really want these power structures. Yeah. Like I said before, yeah, yeah, we're a large group. We re represent, you know, Christian communicators reach 190 million households in the U.S. alone. There were 80 million uh, people uh, that, that profess that they believe in God. There are uh, 25 million or more people that go to church on a regular basis in this country. And like I said, really what Christian communicators want and people in the church is to be left alone. They don't, right. They're not actually out for power. What they want to be is left alone to do whatever God's called them to do. So if God's called them to be evangelistic, then let us do that. If God's called us to feed the hungry, if he's called us to clothe people, if he called us to be counselors, then let us do that. And if he's called us to preach the gospel faithfully, then let us do that. Again, it's more government intrusion. And and so what I see more happening today is as Christians stand up for just their basic rights, they're demonized as these, oh, they're trying to get power and everything. Well, hold on a second. The left, the anti sort of movement, the evil that's going on in this world, what they're really saying is we have the power and you all stay out of it. That's right. Be quiet. Just sit in your corner Just and be, be quiet. quiet. Be quiet and do as you're told. Right. And everything will be okay. Well, Christianity has never been that way. Otherwise, the scripture wouldn't have told us that even the gates of hell won't stand against the gospel. Right, right. Christianity has always been on the march, but it's never been on the march about power. It's been on the march about eternity. Yeah. It's where people spend eternity, and it's the hope and the power of the gospel that the Christian's on the march for. And we know as Christians, that's not a power we have. That's only a power that comes from God. That's right. And it's Jesus we preach, not our ministries. Amen. But I think, uh, and I think that we share that our I think our goal and I bet you agree with this is to share the gospel in every way through what we do it can happen through the news I always say that uh, the you know the, Paul said that the law is a teacher leading men to God I think when you talk about right and wrong it's a gateway you to use a term that you're familiar with amen it's a gateway to God because he's the God of all truth I want to just say one last practical thing this uh, just because I was with um, I am with American Family Association and I was there morning show host for 10 years. And uh, when a, a survey was done among voters in general in the 2016 election, we came in, I think, third in terms of the thing that people said influenced their vote, which is interesting because we weren't like, we weren't pushing a candidate on a 501c3, but they were listening to us for information. I only say that because that's the influence that Christian media can have. Amen. If it's, we do it in the right motivation uh, it can be powerful because of God's power, not because of ours. All right. So, Amen. Troy, any final thoughts? One more thing you want to share about national religious broadcasters or what we're doing here? Sure. Just for your audience to know, everybody out there, we do this annual conference every year. We'll be in February next year. We'll be in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, you can go to nrb.org and get more information about that. And this is a great way. If you think God's calling you into Christian communication, this is a place to be. You can learn from people who have been doing it for a while. You can get all the tips you need to. But also, if you're just out there concerned about what's going on in our culture today. Uh, we run a number of what we call NRB forums where we get panels of experts together that talk about these issues, general confusion, the cancel culture, and all of these. And this is a great place. And we'll be we'll be back again in February in Nashville, Tennessee. Wow. All right. Nash back to Nashville. Yep, back yeah, to Nashville. Yeah, that, that's back to home turf for NRB. All right, so uh, Troy Miller, president and CEO of the National Religious Broadcasters. It's been such a pleasure, Troy. Uh, I been, can't shake your hand. Uh, it's, it's been a joy been, to be with you, Sandy. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. This has been Sandy Rios on Sandy Rios 24